SpaceX may introduce Raptor 3 sooner than expected. We all know SpaceX is developing the Raptor 3 engine, but why does it have to make an appearance now? The answer has a lot to do with the two recent failed Starship flights. SpaceX's newly launched Starship Block 2 has made two flights, both of which ended in the loss of the ship. An analysis of SpaceX's seventh Starship flight test indicates that harmonic vibrations in the fuel and oxidizer lines, more intense than those observed during ground tests, triggered significant propellant leaks within the attic area. These leaks led to fires in the engine bay, causing extensive damage to vital engine components and ultimately resulting in a catastrophic failure. To tackle the issue, an extended duration static fire was conducted prior to Starship's eighth flight test. The 60-second burn was designed to test multiple engine thrust levels and three distinct hardware configurations in the Raptor vacuum engine feed lines, aiming to replicate and resolve the harmonic response observed during Flight 7. Since then, SpaceX has introduced several temporary measures to minimize the risk of fires in the attic area. These include the addition of extra vents and a new purge system that uses gaseous nitrogen, enhancing the current generation of ship's ability to withstand propellant leaks. They also stress that once Raptor 3 is successfully developed and deployed, the Block 2 problems will be greatly reduced. Anyway, although they had not yet used Raptor 3, SpaceX thought the upgrades they had made would be enough to solve the fire problem. But they were wrong. Flight 8, which took place more than a month later, encountered the same problem. Although there was no camera view of the attic like in the previous flight, we still clearly saw a fire in the engine bay, which led to the explosion of a vacuum engine and the eventual loss of the spacecraft. Well, if those temporary measures can't solve the problem, SpaceX has only one way left, which is to use Raptor 3. SpaceX recently posted a post that might be a hint at this, written on X. Raptor 3 is an unprecedented step forward in rocket engine design, which will help us increase Starship's efficiency and the amount of mass Starship is able to deliver to space. It's important to note that this post was made shortly before the eighth flight, and especially just after SpaceX had to abort the first attempt due to an initial pressurization issue. Starship Block 2 was originally designed to use Raptor 3, so SpaceX may have realized the importance of this, and now they will try to speed up the completion of this engine. The Raptor 3 engine isn't just coming soon, it's already here in a practical sense. SpaceX unveiled the Raptor 3 in August 2024, with its first static fire test conducted at their McGregor, Texas facility on August 9, 2024. This marked its debut as a functional engine, not just a concept. By January 2025, at least two Raptor 3 engines, serial numbers 1 and 4, had been spotted at McGregor, with intensive testing ongoing, suggesting SpaceX has produced and is refining multiple units. Elon Musk has confirmed it's in the production phase, with posts on X from March 4, 2025, stating it has almost twice the thrust and much higher reliability than Raptor 1, despite costing about four times less. Okay, you've been listening to me talk about Raptor 3 for a while now, but what exactly is this thing and how will it help solve the problems Starship is facing? Raptor 3 is the newest and most advanced version of the Raptor engine designed to eventually replace Raptor 2. Like its predecessors, it is also a full-flow staged combustion engine. The full-flow staged combustion cycle gets its name from the way propellants flow through the pre-burners. Both the fuel and oxidizer are fully directed through separate pre-burners and turbines, resulting in two distinct flow paths, a fuel-rich pre-burner and an oxidizer-rich pre-burner. Almost all of the oxidizer is routed through the oxidizer-rich pre-burner and turbine, with only a small portion sent through the fuel-rich pre-burner. Similarly, the majority of the fuel flows through the fuel-rich pre-burner and turbine, with a minimal amount passing through the oxidizer-rich pre-burner. This design ensures that both propellants reach the combustion chamber in a fully gaseous state. This offers a significant advantage over other cycles. Gas-to-gas -gas interactions are highly efficient, promoting better mixing of the gases before combustion. As a result, Combustion occurs more rapidly with fewer unburned residues compared to liquid-liquid 
or liquid gas interactions. The Raptor 3 represents a major leap forward compared to its predecessors, Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. It produces 280 tonnes of thrust in the sea level variant, marking a 51% increase over Raptor 1's 185 tonnes and a 21% increase over Raptor 2's 230 tonnes. Additionally, it is lighter weighing just 1,525 kilograms compared to Raptor 1's 2,080 kilograms and Raptor 2's 1,630 kilograms. With a specific impulse of 350 seconds, it also offers improved efficiency. This power was achieved thanks to SpaceX's groundbreaking and genius changes to Raptor 3. With the Raptor 3's design, a lot of parts were either removed or integrated inside. Elon, in an interview with Everyday Astronaut, said, Bolts and flanges and seal of hell, especially if they're hot. So the first step SpaceX took was to eliminate or replace as many bolted joints as possible with single-piece components. Another key goal was to do away with the traditional protective engine shrouds. With Raptor 3, SpaceX took a bold step by integrating much of the plumbing and sensor systems directly into the housing wall. Here, Innovative features like integral cooling and secondary flow circuits were woven through different sections of the engine, eliminating the need for a separate heat shield altogether. This streamlined design not only reduced complexity, but also made the engine more efficient and resilient. Raptor 3 is specifically engineered to operate with deep cryogenic propellants, liquids cooled to temperatures just above their freezing points, rather than their typical boiling points as used in most cryogenic rocket engines. This approach, known as subcooling, increases the density of the propellant, allowing for more mass per unit volume. As a result, engine performance is enhanced. Subcooled propellants boost specific impulses while reducing the risk of cavitation at the turbo pump inlets due to the higher mass flow rate of the propellant relative to the power generated. Cavitation, which occurs when vapor bubbles form in the fuel, can disrupt fuel flow, decrease pressure, and even erode turbine blades. The Raptor engine achieves a roughly 3.8 to 1 oxidizer to fuel ratio, and its methalox liquid methane and oxygen propellants burn cleanly, minimizing carbon buildup within the engine. While other companies, such as Blue Origin with its BE4 engine and the Chinese startup Space Epoch with its Longyun 70, have adopted liquid methane and oxygen propellants. None have achieved the same level of performance as the Raptor. The sophisticated yet efficient design of the Raptor 3 plays a crucial role in enhancing Starship's fire safety. Its more compact architecture significantly reduces the attic volume, while its refined design eliminates most of the joints that could potentially leak into this space. This innovation greatly mitigates the risk of fire or explosion within the attic area. Of course, in addition to replacing the engine, SpaceX also has to solve the feed line problem for it. Of course, in addition to replacing the engine, SpaceX also had to solve the problem of its feed line. This is the part that suffered damage and caused the fuel leak for Block 2. SpaceX recently posted a job listing for this specific position. In the post, SpaceX stated that they are seeking to hire a propulsion systems engineer for the Raptor engine feed line. The role includes sizing vehicle feedline components, engaging in detailed mechanical design, performing structural analysis, and driving the manufacturing and build flow of parts and systems. The propulsion systems engineer will develop the concept of operations for their systems, from acceptance testing to in-flight operations. The propulsion systems engineer for the Raptor engine feedline will be responsible for the design, development and testing of feedline systems that deliver liquid methane and liquid oxygen to Raptor engines throughout all flight phases. This includes performing structural analysis on parts and components to ensure the feed system's survivability, developing 3D models and creating associated drawings, design documentation and reports. The role also requires close collaboration with the fluid team to define and implement load parameters, as well as working alongside the manufacturing and build teams to ensure designs are suitable for mass production and address any issues during manufacturing. 
Additionally, the engineer will optimize feed system components for mass and cost efficiency and coordinate and execute the development, qualification and acceptance testing of flight hardware. All this allowed them to develop an advanced feed line system that was more robust and most importantly, worked without causing any problems during flight. Still, there's no guarantee they'll be able to work things out and have six Raptor 3 engines ready for Flight 9. The Flight 9 S-35 spacecraft has successfully completed three cryo tests at Massey's test site and has now returned home. As for Super Heavy, SpaceX has two options. One is to use Booster 16 and the other is to reuse Booster 14. If they decide to reuse it, this will be the first test to prove the ship's reusability. Since they failed on Flight 8, Flight 9's flight profile will likely be similar to the previous two flights. Starship will first have to survive. Then it will perform a mock Starlink deployment test as well as a Raptor engine relight in orbit. According to an FAA document about Flight 9, before Flight 8 happened, this flight had the option of ship returning to the launch site for a catch. Now that's a really small possibility, but it's not zero. The success or failure of the next flight will have a huge impact on the survival of the Starship project. However, knowing Elon's personality, he will not give up on this spaceship so easily. It's like the classic captain going down with the ship kind of thing. The future of Starship and SpaceX remains uncertain, but it's certainly something worth watching as it unfolds.